good morning everyone and welcome to this tutorial and greetings to you so this is uh, Anjil Vijay so in this tutorial we will shortly see uh, about the OpenShift uh, stream so OpenShift tool itself and to start off with before I start my discussion so this is our first tutorial so let me have a brief introduction about myself and then we'll start the tutorial quickly so myself is Abdul. So I'm a Red Hat Certified Architect uh, in the infrastructure domain. So I do uh, basically uh, my specialist uh, interest in um, OpenShift and relevant products. So I do work on Ansible as well as the other uh, data center Red Hat stuff. So basically, I work as a technical consultant as well as a technical trainer. And to start off with, so today we are going to see uh, about one of the famous tools out there in the market. So one of the famous uh, tool in a sense like orchestration out there in the market. So I can say DevOps tool out there in the market. So here we are going to start with discussion about that. So first of all, we have to know what is uh, orchestration tool. So what's an orchestration tool and what are the what's the purpose of that? So we have to know. So you can just Google it. So as I sh I'm showing there, so orchestration tool list, just Google it. So you will find a lot of links. So just I'm choosing a link randomly. So here you can find a link which says 16 best container orchestration tool. Just I open up this one. So there's nothing biased about this one. So just um, a random URL. Okay, so here uh, we have we can see a 16 best container orchestration tool and services. So in that, uh, first of all, what's the need for orchestration? Then we will see about the tools. Uh, the first thing for orchestration, the need for orchestration is that so uh, we have containers. So to deal with the containers itself, we have a lot of uh, tools out there. Like we have uh, Docker, we can we have uh, Podman, etc. So we have a lot of tools to deal with that. But when the containers have become more and uh, more from like 100 to 2,000 to millions of containers, so when the containers become more, so we are in need of a orchestration because the basic tools, the container lifecycle management tools, uh, as like a Docker, which I mentioned before, uh, are not capable of dealing with this uh, stuff. So dealing with the containers at large scale, they are not uh, they are not itself uh, capable of dealing with that even. The Docker itself, so we have another orchestration tool to deal with the Docker There was a Docker spam, which was an orchestration tool provided by the Docker itself. So similar to that, so we are going to see an orchestration tool here. So the first of all, the need for orchestration tool are this one. Right? So we need to, when when the containers become more, okay, so we need to have a networking among them. And we need a, a system to run over that. We need to connect all the systems together. So we need to have a sort of a networking in that environment. So we need to have high availability. So when the containers are there, 100 containers, but to make sure that all these 100 containers are equal. So I should have high availability. Even something goes down, others, others should be able to take the overload. So the high availability is one of the prime requirement. And I should be able to easily deploy it. So using a Docker, I can deploy 100 containers, 1,000 containers. But the time of deployment and the nature of uh, that deployment is like very difficult. So very difficult to deploy that thing. So it's going to take a long time. And you have to do the bottom task again and again to deploy the more containers. So the ease, I want to have an ease of deployment and maintenance. And there should be a scalability. Scalability, like we should have a automatic scalability or automatic Scaling is required, or we should have a manual scaling. Another you know, there is, we want to be desired to scale it, so we should be able to scale. It. So there is a scaling requirement either through automated way or through the manual. And the service discovery. So service discovery is that it's not that you have to just run your container. So the container should be reachable. There should be a process. There should be a mechanism to reach your container uh, in the public domain from a from a public term. because your clients are not going to be internal to organization. Your clients, of course, will be from outside organization and they should be mean to uh, reach the containers which are running inside your platform or inside your environment. So they should have a means. They should discover your application. So that process is called service discovery. 
So in upcoming uh, tutorials, we'll learn more about what service discovery is, and then uh, security and compliance. Of course, that is one of the prime requirement for any enterprise infrastructure, and we should have a support, the post uh, deployment support or post installation support, uh, even to the platform or to the application that is required. And finally, I should have administrative overhead uh, management. So I should be able to manage the administration administrative overheads. So that is finally required. So here are some of the things. It's not that this is eight, so there are more uh, about this. Uh, so just to start off with, to kick start to understand about the orchestration, so I just visit this eight points here. And then coming back to the tool itself, so what's the best tool out in the market is um, the Kubernetes. The Kubernetes is just the most, uh, without a shadow of doubt, uh, the Kubernetes is being used most uh, in the enterprise or in the other workloads, say in the non-prod environment. Uh, the reason for that, uh, Kubernetes is open source. So it's out of box uh, container tool. So it's open source, it's highly flexible and easy to uh, manage and map that tool uh, here. So most of them, they prefer the Kubernetes to be the orchestration tool. But the Kubernetes do have some shortfalls. So we'll discuss that later. But, um, after the Kubernetes, so there comes the next one, which is the OpenShift. So OpenShift is the next uh, best orchestration tool after Kubernetes. And it is the enterprise orchestration. orchestration. So Kubernetes is an open source project, um, upstream project, uh, but it's not an enterprise grade tool. But here, OpenShift is an enterprise grade project. So, but of course, the OpenShift is built on top of Kubernetes. Uh, so we, we do have uh, variations in the OpenShift products as well, but mostly OpenShift is an enterprise product also. Okay, so Red Hat maintains the OpenShift project, so they maintain that project. And there is an open source version, uh, like now there is OpenShift origin is described here, that origin has been uh, depicted, uh, but have a different name now. So we'll discuss it with that later. And enterprise version, that's what we call that OCP container platform. So what this offers is that along with the core Kubernetes feature, it offers container management and orchestration tool out of box, which is there are other features which it's going to offer. So we'll discuss about that when we discuss about architecture of uh, OpenShift. Right. Okay. So we are going to discuss about to this tool and this uh, is like an enterprise product. So even to say it is like a tool, this is like a product which uh, integrates a lot of features on different dimensions and verticals. So it has, a, this is just a completely a process. So this product can be looked from a different dimensions. So in this tutorial, we'll just understand uh, how to develop your skill path in the future. So what are the streams you have, and we will cover that streams as, as much as we can uh, in the short tutorials, the short topics. And uh, Talking about the certifications, or at Hat do provide OpenShift uh, certification. So we are going to discuss about the Red Hat skill path, and we are going to discuss that uh, content as well. So during our presentation, so this video, so we will be discussing about the content as well. So we will uh, go to the Red Hat skill path. So if you see, uh, let me just pull out here. I already have done it. So you can uh, get the link from here, Red Hat, uh, Red Hat uh, Catalog. So from here, you can get this uh, document. So this document outlines the Red Hat uh, skill path. So as this is a Red Hat, the OpenShift is a product, uh, which uh, this product can be looked at from the different dimensions, like as I said before. So you can look at from the admin dimension, you can look at the product from the developer dimension, or even you can look at from the DevOps dimension. So DevOps, which integrates both development and administration to some um, percentage of that variations. So that too includes uh, this product. So you can look at from this product from whatever the use cases, so whatever the streams you're working on. So you can look at this product in different verticals. So here we start off with, uh, in this one, uh, admin skill path. So we will discuss about um, the contents related to this course at DO 280. In the upcoming uh, tutorials, we'll be discussing about this contents, DO 280. So there are uh, other uh, things to start up here. 
so most of the things we are going to work so there are some uh, free uh, preview versions or the technical preview versions we can go through that as well and after that we st we need to understand about containers because we are going to do the orchestration uh, managing the containers very large so we need to know about the containers first and then uh, the further there is a course like you leave over native followed with the nine exam certification exam followed with that we are going to have tvo 280 so which will be will be focusing more and in the upcoming uh, tutorials will focus other streams as well so here we start with now admin skill path and there are other tutorials where we'll uh, do the developer skill path as well yeah so this is uh, how we are going to start so i hope this will be useful for you so i uh, hope to see you in upcoming uh, tutorials so we'll stop here and then uh, if, if you are having any comments for improving our presentation you can just uh, give your comment